Welcome to today's video on Cambridge IGCSE Mathematics 0607 and 0580. The topic for today is geometry, where we will be focusing on the subtopic polygons. To begin with, we're going to focus on the different angles that we can see in triangles. When we have any triangle, you need to remember that if you add up all of their angles, they're always going to give us a total of 180 degrees. So in this triangle that we've been given here, if I add up my angle A, my angle B, and my angle C together, then we're going to get a total of 180 degrees. We also have different types of triangles. One of this is an isosceles triangle. The characteristics of isosceles triangles are that they have two sides that are the exact same length and two angles that are the exact same magnitude. In the isosceles triangle that we've been given here, I can say that these two sides, and I'm going to highlight them in red, they're going to be the same length. And because they are the same length, these two angles that we have at our base, they're going to be the exact same magnitude as well. You need to remember that although the angles in orange um, are going to be the exact same magnitude, if I add up all three of my angles here, they will still total to give us 180 degrees. The next type of triangle that we have is equilateral triangles. And in equilateral triangles, all three sides of the triangle would be the exact same length. So all these sides would be of the same length which means that all of the angles would be the exact same angle as well. Because we know in any triangle, all of the angles should add up to 180, and we know that in equilateral triangles, each of the angles are the exact same. If I take 180 and I split it into three equal parts, I'll get the size of each of these angles, and each of these angles would actually have a magnitude of 60 degrees. And in any equilateral triangle, not just the one that we've given here, every equilateral triangle would have a magnitude of 60 degrees for all three of their angles. Now, that being said, we also have other types of triangles that we might come across. One of this is a right angle triangle. And in a right angle triangle, like the name suggests, we have one right angle. For one angle, that's 90 degrees. We also have scalene triangles. In a scalene triangle, you need to remember that these are triangles that have three different lengths for each of their lengths and three different angle magnitudes for each of their angles. So they, have, they are triangles with three different lengths and three different angles. Moving on, we're going to be looking at quadrilaterals. Now, quadrilaterals are shapes that have four sides and four vertices with four angles. Quadrilaterals are a type of polygon. Polygons are any closed shape. So if I have a closed shape with four sides, four vertices, and four angles, then we call them quadrilaterals. Now, there's so many different quadrilaterals that we might have. And one of the most famous quadrilaterals that we have is the square. Now, in a square, each side or each length of the square is going to be the exact same. They're going to be equal lengths. And each angle that we have in our square is going to be a right angle. Or it's going to be 90 degrees. If we look at opposite sides in our square, opposite sides are always going to be parallel to each other. So the lines in red, they are parallel to each other, as well as the lines in blue, which are parallel to each other as well. If I get the diagonal for my square, and a diagonal basically connects opposite vertices together. And if I draw the diagonals of my square here, then these diagonals are going to connect or they're going to bisect each other at right angles. So the diagonals will be cutting each other at right angles. Other properties of the square includes its number of lines of symmetry, and we can see that a square is going to have four lines of symmetry. And let's go ahead and draw all four lines of symmetry. So that's the line over here, as well as the line over here. 
So these are the different um, lines of symmetry that we have in our square. And it also has rotational symmetry of order 4. And what rotational symmetry means is that if I place a pin at the center of my square and I keep rotating it, then it's going to fall in this exact same shape or in this exact same orientation four different times when it's rotated an entire circle or 360 degrees. The next quadrilateral that we have is a rectangle. And in a rectangle, we can see that opposite sides are parallel and equal in length. So all the sides are not equal in length, but when we look at opposite sides, they're going to be parallel to each other, and they're also going to be of the same length. The angles that we have in our rectangle are also going to be 90 degrees. They're also going to be all right angles. And when we get the diagonals of our rectangle. So the diagonals are the lines connecting the vertices together. So that's these two lines over here. Then they're going to bisect each other. They're not bisecting each other at 90 degrees, but what we mean by bisect is that they're going to cut each other into exactly half. So this diagonal in blue is cutting the diagonal that I have in green right into half. Now in our rectangle, we have just two lines of symmetry. The diagonals do not act as the lines of symmetry, but the two lines of symmetry that we have would be a horizontal line of symmetry as well as a vertical line of symmetry. And it's also going to have rotational symmetry of order two. The next quadrilateral that we're going to be looking at is parallelograms. Parallelograms have opposite sides that are parallel to each other and that are equal in length. So this and this, these are parallel lines. So the opposite lines are parallel to each other as well as they are equal in length. The opposite angles are also going to be equal, but unlike our rectangle here, these angles are not going to be 90 degrees. But this angle at A and the angle at C, they're going to be equals to each other. And similarly, the angle at B and the angle at D are also going to be equal to each other. If we draw the diagonals of our parallelogram, then we can see that the diagonals would bisect each other. So my diagonal AC would cut my diagonal BD right into half. Parallelograms have no lines of symmetry, but they do have rotational symmetry of order two. The next quadrilateral that we're looking at is a rhombus. A rhombus is just a special parallelogram which has all of its lengths that are the exact same size. So all lengths in a rhombus would be the exact same. Opposite angles, just like parallelograms, are going to be equal. And the diagonals, not only are they going to bisect each other, but the diagonals of the rhombus are going to bisect each other at right angles. The rhombus has two lines of symmetry and it has a rotational symmetry of order two. The next quadrilateral that we're looking at is trapeziums. In trapeziums, they have one pair of opposite sides that are going to be parallel to each other. And you'd only always see just one pair of opposite sides that are parallel to each other, nothing more than this. And these generally do not have any lines of symmetry or any lines of rotational symmetry, except in one special case. And this is when we have something that we call an isosceles trapezium. And what an isosceles trapezium would be is that these non-parallel sides that we have, if they are the exact same length or if they are equal, then a trapezium would have one line of symmetry right down the center here. So it would have one vertical line of symmetry. The final quadrilateral that we're going to be looking at is a kite. In a kite, we have two pairs of adjacent sides that are equal. So my adjacent sides in this kite here is A and C and C and B. And you can see that they're equal in length. 
And the second pair of adjacent sides that I have is A and D and B and D. And they're also going to be equal in that. If I get the diagonals of a pipe, they're going to bisect each other at right angles. It has one line of symmetry right at the center. So the line CD is the line of symmetry furthest kite, but it does not have any rotational symmetry. Next, we're going to go ahead and look at polygons. The polygons are two-dimensional closed shapes, and they're always made of straight lines. When we have regular polygons, these are polygons that have all of their sides the exact same length, so they have all equal sides, and all of the angles in our regular polygon are also going to be the exact same. They're going to be all equal. If polygons don't follow these two rules, then we say they're going to be irregular polygons instead. So over here, this is an this is a regular pentagon with equal sides and equal interior angles. And then next to this, we have the pentagon in yellow, which is an irregular pentagon because it does not have equal sides. And neither does it have equal angles. We can find the sum of interior angles of a polygon using the equation 180 times n minus 2, where n is the number of sides in a polygon. For example, if we look at this polygon over here, this has a total of five sides. So this is a pentagon and n would be five. So I can do 180 times five minus two, which is three. So 180 times three, which gives me 540. So it means that when we have pentagons, the total sum of all of the interior angles that we have here is going to give us 540. Now, in this diagram here, we can see an irregular pentagon. So we would not be able to go ahead and exactly define the size or the magnitude of each of these angles. But if we had a regular pentagon instead, we can work out the size of each angle by doing 540 divided by 5. So in a regular pentagon, the size of each angle would be 108 degrees. The relationship that we have between the exterior angles of a polygon is that the sum of the exterior angles of any polygon is always going to add up to 360. So in this example, we've asked us to find the magnitude of the exterior angle of a regular pentagon. Because we know a pentagon has five sides, then it has to also have five exterior angles. So 360 divided by 5 would give us the value of one exterior angle of a pentagon, which is going to be 72 degrees. Um, you need to remember that when we get exterior angles, how we can draw these exterior angles is by just extending each of the sides in our pentagon. So if I extend these sides using lines like these, then I would be able to see where these exterior angles are lying. And this angle here, 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 and here are what we call the exterior angles. And each of these would be 72 degrees. So a common misconception is to take the exterior angle as being the entire angle that we have outside the shape, but that's not correct. The exterior angle is if we connect or extend these straight lines of our polygon, then the angle this extended line and our polygon make is what we call the exterior angle. So there we go. That's all we have on today's video. Thank you.